Welcome to another Creative Bug Live with Get Messy. I'm Lauren. I'm Katie. And we founded Get Messy Art Journal, and we are here in the studio this week filming lots of really fun classes for you guys at Creative Bug. And we are back for another live, and we are going to make an art journal page with you. So we would love for you to join us. Yes. We are going to be using a picture of Frida Kahlo because we all love Frida Kahlo. Some people more than others, but... <laughs> but she's a very great symbol and fe as a female artist. We are using a copyright free image. It was taken by a family member and it is in the comments if you want to print it out yourself. And make along with us, please. And then share your work with us so we can see. Yeah, we're really excited for that part. Yes, oh, you can tag us at Get Messy Art Journal on Instagram so that we can see your work. Mm -hmm. So. All right, so to get started, we have added our images in. I have covered mine with this amazing Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground. And so what you do is this is perfect for these, because we just printed this on just normal copy paper that you just have every day in your office lying around. And so I just painted a full layer. I've already done the whole page, so I'm only just gonna do this corner. But you just paint a thin layer over top of your image and it will create a nice protective seal over your page so that you can paint and add water and different media on top of it. Yeah, the water is a big one. If you're printing on an inkjet printer, you do want to cover it, although I think that'll probably make the ink bleed. So if you've got like a laser printer, then that's a great idea. Or yep. you can also use magazine images, you can use photographs. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Lots of things to play with. Yes, piece. or you can use gesso if you don't have this watercolor ground. Yep. All right, so let's start decorating. Yeah, okay. So I feel like I want to add a old book page here just because I've been using that in basically everything I've made for a long time. I'm going to add that to the bottom just to add a bit more interest. What are you doing? I love these brush pens. Uh, I'm using a Japanese version called SAI. Uh, you can also use the Tombow brush pens. And so what you do is you just color on your page as you would normally, and then you just add a little bit of water and it turns it into a really nice watercolor. And so you have a little bit more control, but you still get that beautiful watercolor feel. Mm. And what colors are you going to add to Frida today? You know, I love bright colors. I love all the colors. Yeah. And so I'm going to make her a very nice bright floral crown. What are you going <laughs> to, what colors are you going to use? <laughs> this is a goofy one. I am using pastel colors because I am petrified of bright colors. Um, and that is why we printed Frida out in black and white because we get to add our own colors to it. That's right. Yeah. Did you pass me the glue stick there? Yes. I love to alter images like this. It's a very fun way to show some personality and add some uniqueness into your journal. So we'll all be working on the same page if you choose to use this one, but our pages are all gonna come out very different. Mm. What other things do you think we could add to this page besides just straight color? Well, stitching would be a Ooh. fantastic way to... How would you stitch it? Would you, would you think you'd make shapes or... You like the abstract shapes. I do like the yeah. abstract shapes. I would probably... I'll probably do this with my pins later, but with the stitching, you could do the flowers in her hair or you could add some nice mm -hmm. designs into her garment or you could do a background of some sort. I like the idea of flowers. I think you could do that with a collage ephemera as well. You could kind mm. of give her a flower crown with flowers. But you're of your choosing. Yeah, you could paint yeah. them, draw them. And you could even add in different unexpected items like tucked away in there. Mm. That would be a fun secret. So, okay, so tell us in the comments why you like Frida. If you like Frida, um, I like Frida because I love that she pulled a lot of inspiration from the desert. Because I live in the desert, so obviously I really love the desert. Do you think and I th that's why she added so much color? Because the desert is pretty neutral? It is neutral, yeah. and I've heard a lot of artists talk about that before. 
that, you know, when they've lived in the desert, they craved that color, and mm -hmm. so that their artwork tends to be very bright. But also, where she lived in the desert was also very, very colorful. Um, and I think that's something that people don't know as much about the desert, uh, is how much color can be found if you are willing to take the time and look for it. Mm. Maybe that's why I like pastels, because my life is so busy and, like, crazy that I want a little bit of calm and I do that with muted color. Mm. So sometimes you choose color based on what you need. Yeah. A lot of people are saying hi. People love the black and white that you're adding to. Um, get messy in this year and the blue bucket. Ooh. Hey, messy bugs. <laughs> yeah. We totally decided that is what you need. So cute. All right, now she has a flower on her face. I need to fix that a little bit. Why didn't you find a flower on her face? <laughs> well, it's just this one looks like it's growing out of her face, so I want to give her an even one so she doesn't look so disproportionate. Oh, good. I'm still going with my abstracty background, kind of making a halo of color around her. Ooh, that's lovely. So while my watercolor dries, I'm going to move on to her shirt. I'm going to use my Posca pens. These are one of my favorite tools that I'm always reaching for them. I travel with them. They're a paint pen, and you can control how much ink and paint comes out of them, and you can do a lot with them. It's just going to do some patterns. So do you have favorite colors of Posca pens or... All of them, I was probably for you, it's all of them, right? It is all of them, but I do find that I use the, the blue, the pink, and the yellow, and the white the most. <laughs> Lauren, you asked all me, the colors. You asked me which, which ones, not which one. I, you know, I could basically say, like, which ones don't you use? That, yes, that would have been a better. Much easier. Better question. <laughs> I know that I keep stealing your pink one and your blue one. Those are really good colors for me. They are. Do you feel like you have life colors that everything runs in a certain yes. three? <laughs> yes. My current life color is the color that I'm currently wearing, which is this like minty green blue thing. Um, it used to be pink, like solidly for years and years and years, but now it's this blue. It's a bit more relaxed. What is your color? Um, I have three. And I normally am wearing them. I decorate in them. I use them frequently. Uh, it's like a mustard yellow, a mm. raspberry pink, and a turquoise. Definitely those are your colors. I'm giving Frida some neck tattoos. Ooh, I bet she really likes those. I saw this uh, at Social Sketch this week. Someone added neck tattoos uh, to to an image and yeah totally in love with that so even though i will never be a tattoo artist based on what i'm currently <laughs> doing i love the look i think it's so lovely so social sketch was a evening gathering of artists in this really cool space here in san francisco that we went to where everyone was just creating and passing their work around and talking art supplies it was like beyond yeah. inspiring uh, so if you guys have one of those in your hometown, let us know, because we would like to come to them. Susan Anderson asked, did you use Mod Podge to create the abstract color? Mm. Her yeah, so Susanna is asking if you can use Mod Podge instead of the gesso, instead of the watercolor ground. Um, my answer to that is never use Mod Podge for anything, because it's so freaking sticky and gets everywhere. Um, mm. No, probably don't use that. Probably use something else. Yeah, I think your Mod Podge would make your pages stick together too bad. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't venture mm. into that. I'm kind of getting stuck on what to do next. So I'm going to go to one of my defaults uh, just to keep myself flowing. And I think I'm going to let her read a quote. Something that she said that I really like is that is I paint because I need to. So I'm going to let her that somewhere. Oh, it's it, yeah. Perfect. I'm using a Kurataki Zig brush pen. 
and I'm so, so in love with it. Sometimes I squeeze too hard and the ink just like pours everywhere, but it does make for a nice little bunch of messy splashes. I think that's also what I like about art journaling is that you are going to make a mess, you are going to get messy, and it's going to be glorious. Exactly. Now that my flowers are dry, I'm going to go back in with a micron and I'm going to add some more detail into them. different pen that's not so dry. Uh, this is just a pilot pen and like we have discussed previously before it is definitely our life choice of pen and it looks great on watercolor. So don't forget that we are doing a giveaway. You can win six months to create a bug and a free season pass to get messy. The giveaway link is going to be in the comments and it is open through the end of the week. So make sure that you click on that link and you enter to win and you share it with your friends so that they can enter also and that they can make some art with us. What are you using to letter? Have you already said that? Yep, my Kurosaki Zig brush pen. You're so good at it. Pretty trusty, even oh, when you yeah. make a mess of splash. <laughs> I like how you mixed your lettering mm. and you used a couple different fonts. So, totally didn't do that on purpose just because I did not have space. Um, mm. I could have probably brought it over here. Uh, and the pages are looking a bit disjointed, so I'm going to add some paint to this side just to get it flowing a bit better. <laughs> Jessica, yes, I am using a lot of paint. Um, I, I suppose it's still only three colors, so I'm not going too crazy. <laughs> they love the messy splashes. They mm -hmm. love the pens on the spirit gesso. Mm -hmm. Love the pens. Yeah, the the messy splashes are great, and I think that's also what's nice about art chilling is that you know that. Like this is where, like that is a complete accident. I did not plan that. I didn't want that to happen originally, but I kind of do like the look of it. And I would only know that if I did it. I mean, like I would only know that if I made that mistake. Ooh, what quote are you using of hers? So I'm altering a quote that she said, and I'm just kind of boiling it down and phrasing it a little bit more of my own. I'm writing paint your own reality. I feel like oh. it's perfect for art in general and for how I'm altering this image. Well, that's true is that we're not, we're not painting completely objectively. We are adding our own backgrounds into it, our own styles, our own thoughts. Exactly. And that's the beauty of art journaling is that there really are no rules. And I know that scares people, that that's too much freedom, but it helps you feel more free and not feel like you are having to add up to something or have a certain outcome. Yeah, and I mean, like, if it is too loose, like, for me, that is very scary. Like, yeah. <laughs> do whatever you want. Way too scary. I mean, you can just, you can use a prompt to create. You can follow along with some of your favorite artists. You can join. I mean, Creative Bug has Facebook Live twice a week, every week. There's so much opportunity for guided creation. Mm -hmm. Really, there's no excuse to not be making things. Exactly. I think she has her tattoos. I like her tattoos. What kind of tattoos do people have? Um... They have words, they have symbols. What word would you think that she has? Freedom. Mm. Diego. Diego. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, Where can Diego go? Ooh. All right, I think I'm gonna add some like subtle lines into her hair. Just add some highlights. 
These are fun little details that you can go in and add. How do you spell Diego? D I E G O. <laughs> Diego. Hi, Diego. Yeah, adding small hidden details are fun because it adds multiple layers for the viewer and for you. The more you look at a page, the more you can find more ideas and things you can do with it, and the more when people look at it, they'll be able to find more hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What are you thinking about? Are you thinking that you... I don't think this ever happened that you're finished before me. I know. <laughs> I normally am a slow worker, but I kind of like her and I'm scared to, to overwork mm. this page. I feel like my one is kind of getting some kind of veil. Yeah. Oh, I like it. This was fun. This was out of my comfort zone and I had a lot of fun and I've learned that sliders are pretty freaking cool. Yep. Yep. Oh, I like your, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me give him, some, okay, I'll give him some bones. Your skull. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm giving some crossbones. I'm so sorry to anyone. Everyone. Actually, I'm sorry for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We always we always try and answer this. Yeah. Um, well, like if you've got a skull that looks like a monkey, then it's probably not done, and you could probably finish it. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, it's never done. You just need to know. Like, you just need to be okay with walking away from the page. Do you come back to it? No, I definitely don't. I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like to go in. I like to work slowly in layers so that I can let ideas kind of simmer and grow and evolve over time. And I just feel like when I, even if I walk away for five minutes and come back, I see it differently and I will have a new idea. I can find a new way to problem solve. Michelle Johnson says, you girls are tattooing Frida and I love that more than I love cheese. Oh, Whoa, that's a lot. That's, that's that a lot. Is a yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah, I know how much Michelle likes tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. uh, yeah, I'm done. I think maybe that's also a good way to know is if you add anything more, it's going to look like you added too much. Yeah. I think you kind of get, you get to know your own style and you know when you're finished, the more you do it, like anything, the more you practice, the more you know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, I kind of have a... A finisher for me is mark making oh. and so that's kind of my last thing I go in and do and I feel like I've got plenty of marks in here I love that. and so now I know I it's love finished her. yeah yours is really bright I'm just thinking yep. I think yours is a bit more like muted than mine yeah like swap today I know it's it's fun though it's fun to experiment with new styles and do things out of your comfort zone even if you don't you know you're not gonna make a whole art journal in that style it's mm. still, you gain something from it every time you do something in a new style. Definitely. Yeah. She reminds us about the good life. Yeah. So, definitely create a page like this. And even more importantly, you can totally win six months to create a bike and access to the new Get Me to See them. Yep. Super easy. You just follow the link in the comments mm -hmm. and you enter. Like, yep. And tell no your friends. Excuses. Yes. No excuses yes. to not do this. Yeah, so that's the beauty of online communities is that you can make new crafty friends or connect with your crafty friends who live somewhere else if you don't have an in-person community. Like my guys. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So we connect all year long online until we're together in one place once a year. Um, so invite all of your friends to create alongside you, and we cannot wait to see your free to pictures. Uh, remember to tag us at Get Messy Art Journal on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys later.